Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming back. Hopefully everybody's had a good week and all of that good stuff. And if you didn't, hopefully the next week will be better. That's what I am. I'm always optimistic, if nothing else. Thank you for coming back to the Dating Well Adulting Podcast. My name is Michael Thomas, and I am one of your lovely co-hosts, along with my other co-host, Reginald Bush, who is standing off to the side waiting to speak to you all. Maybe he will today. He probably will not. I thank you all for listening. I think this is episode 96, I want to say. 94. 95, 96, something like that. Either way, we are cruising and getting closer to 100 episodes of this joint. So for all of you that have been along with me on this journey, I appreciate you. I always appreciate you. And like I always do, I cannot let this moment pass without asking, begging, conjoling, whatever you want to call it, you, to tell 50 friends to tell 50 friends so we can blow up the next 100 to be as successful and as fun and entertaining, at least for me, as this first 100 has been. Yeah, yeah, never really thought it would go this long. Never really thought it would go, be like it is now, but whatever it is, it is what it is. Today, I wanna talk about a few things, but I want to start by talking about marriage. As you all know, and since we're talking about almost getting to 100 episodes, for those of you that have listened to this consistently, and I appreciate you, and I appreciate your telling 50 friends to tell 50 friends, you know that I've spoken openly about my desire to be married. Not only that, but I've also proclaimed that I will be married. That's me being positive as I try to always be, even as old as I am, and knowing that statistically the the probability that's the word i'm looking for of my getting married at this age is decreasing by the second (laughs) that's creeping out of the hourglass but hey i guess i really can't complain too much i hate to break it to you ladies but as bad as it is for me statistically for you ladies it's even worse that sucks but the point is that None of us at this age and stage of our lives, we're more aged than stage, but none of us at this age are getting any younger and none of us at this age are getting any easier to find in love and marriage, unfortunately. But I believe in speaking things into existence. That's what I've always done. And like I said earlier, I remain optimistic. There's really nothing new. Like I said already, if you listen to this joint regularly, you already know that. And I know that my desire to get married, it runs counter to my beliefs in more of an open-minded relationship or just open-minded relationships in general. And I just want to be clear about this. I'm not saying that, you know, when I'm talking about open-minded relationships, it's more of a rejection of the traditional ideals of marriage, but it's not rejecting the idea of marriage. But there are some people that will tie the two together and say they're one and the same. There are people that have openly asked me that if you are so open-minded and you reject some of those traditional views about marriage, what is the point in getting married? And I think that's a fair question to ask. I think all, well, not all questions are fair, but I think that one's a fair question to ask. And I really did some thinking in preparation for this episode though. Like, why is it? like a thing for me to get married, even though I am open to things like, and when I say open to, I'm not saying that I'm campaigning for them or advocating for them. I'm just saying that if the cards fail the way that they fail or whatever, and things like polyamory or swinging or some of the other things that I've talked about and had episodes about, if some of those things were placed on the table, I can't say for a hundred percent that I would just outright reject those things without even giving them thought. They are definitely things that I could give thought if it meant to having a long-term happy partnership. So it goes back to the question that was asked of me, like if you believe in those things or if you're open to those things, those things are counter to, ma- counter to marriage, why wouldn't you be open to just meeting someone 
and living with them for the next 20, 30 years or however long it is until you die without having official paperwork and rings and all of that stuff. And my answer to that question, because I did do it, like I said, I did a lot of thinking about that in preparation for this episode is because <clears throat> some of it could be rooted in religion. And when I say religion, maybe it's more of a spirituality. I like the whole idea of creating a union under the eyes of God in an official capacity. And for whatever reason, that kind of gives me the idea that God is kind of looking down on us and therefore kind of guiding us in a way that we won't be miserable in life. So I think that could play a part in it. And when I say I think, even though I thought a lot about this, like I said earlier, I can't say that I came to, a, to any firm conclusions. And that's why I'm saying I think these are some of the ideas that came into my mind. And I didn't make a de definitive, uh, definitive decision as to an exact reason as to why I feel this way that might seem contradictory to some of you all. But so that's one reason. It, part of it could be rooted in some kind of spirituality, a belief in God, something like that. That's one thing. Also, I think another part of it is that it just seems to me like there is a bond there that is not as easy to walk away from. And as such, just having that title makes you will make you work on things a little bit more than you would in a relationship. And it would make both of you, me and my spouse or potential spouse or whatever you want to call it, it'll make us want to give more. It'll make us feel obligated to give more. Now, with that said, that is my opinion. And, you know, it takes two people to make a marriage work. So if the person that I'm with doesn't share that opinion, then it's all null and vo void. The question is moot. But those are a couple of the things that I thought about when talking about the idea of being marriage. And, and then there are just cool things that I admit have nothing to do with nothing. I like the idea <clears throat> of us sharing the same, same last name. Now I say that, excuse me. <clears throat> I say that while openly acknowledging that that's hypocrisy or silliness or whatever you want to call it because my last name isn't my last name my last name is some slave owner's last name that was given to my ancestors when they were brought over here so saying that I want someone to share my last name that isn't even mine it it, it just sounds silly but even acknowledging that I do admit that there is something cool about having someone and having a bond, even if it's symbolic only in nature, but having someone and having a bond that symbolically is on another level than just being your girlfriend or your woman or your boo or whatever you want to call it. Because, you know, it's, it's always interesting to me, and this isn't a criticism because I'm not knocking anybody's hustle, shoot. I'm not in a relationship. So I'm definitely not trying to be critical of those of you that are. But it's always interesting to me when I meet couples that have been together for, for let's say a decade or whatever, and they introduce their significant other. And it's always, I don't want to say it's always kind of awkward to them because I can't get into their head. But it's interesting, at least to me, to hear someone say, well, hey, we've been together for 10 years. This is my girlfriend. It just sounds weird after so many years to still be saying girlfriend and boyfriend or I don't know, maybe it's just me. But like I said, what do I know? I'm single. I do a podcast for a living about dating, which obviously I'm not the greatest at. So whatever, man. It is what it is. It is what it is. So with all of that said, I believe in marriage, just not necessarily the traditional marriage ideals, but that's enough about me. I'm going to talk about marriage in a different context today. And even though I alluded to it, I wasn't as direct about it. Today, I want to talk about 
people that don't want to be married. You're talking about that couple that's been together for 10 years and you know they don't know how to introduce each other. There's more and more of that going around. And that is actually becoming the trend. And as many people might not know, and if you don't know, I'll enlighten you, people aren't getting married anymore. Well, I shouldn't say people aren't getting married. Obviously people are getting married, but people aren't getting married at the rates that they were in the past. Marriage rates are declining. And that's not putting it, and that's putting it mildly. And while a lot of people might want to just immediately attribute that to the pandemic and say, well, things have changed and stuff like that. Nah, marriages, marriage rates had hit, hit an all time low be, way before the pandemic. As a matter of fact, I was Googling in preparation for this episode, and there was an article in US News and World Report that talked about how marriages hit an all time low in 2018. So, that was way before anybody thought about a pandemic. And since 2018, things have just progressively declined. And the bottom line is just that, like I said before, people just aren't feeling this marriage stuff anymore. I don't really know, you know, societies evolve, everything evolves. And if you are a religious person, people look at evolutions oftentimes as a declining in the morals of society, which in Christian views are indicators that Jesus is coming back. Now, I don't believe that every, every indication of evolution or every example of evolution means that. I think that's extreme. I think a lot of things that happen are for the positive, even if they don't necessarily appear to be when they first kind of step on the scene or come on the scene or present themselves on the scene. It's hard for me to say that the Me Too movement and the evolution of society because of that is a negative thing, even though it might have been used in negative ways and but that's always the case with any movement that starts off. When it starts off, you know, people take advantage, people misuse it, but the overall view and feeling of it is good. Same thing with Black Lives Matter. You know, people might misuse it, people might speak out against it, and now there's this serious backlash against it and all of this stuff. Well, there always has been because anything that's black gets a backlash just because people don't. Anyway, I'm not getting into that, but you know what I'm saying, though. But all in all, it's good. You know, people talk about cancel culture and everybody's talking about Dave Chappelle now. That's the hot topic or the hot person that everybody's talking about. And whether you believe in whether you are whether you believe that he was offensive in the things that he said in that comedy special or you're someone who's riding with him and you say that cancel culture is way out of line and all of that stuff. The whole idea that somebody is not just allowed to do or say whatever they want without any consequences, I don't have a problem with that. Now, again, with that said, like the other two examples that I presented, sometimes it can be misused, sometimes it can be taken too far, but the general sentiment as we calibrate these things, I I see them, I see those evolutions as more positives than negatives. So I don't necessarily think that everything new is bad, like a lot of people, a lot of older people, a lot of people that might even listen to this podcast. (laughs) But yeah, but it does speak to something that you need to be conscious of and bringing it back to marriage and people not necessarily wanting to be married anymore or be married at the rates that they're, that they're, that they were back in the day that speaks to a lot it speaks to a lot of evolution and what sparked all of this the idea for this episode was that i was just doing my normal reading and like i said the universe usually presents me with an idea and when that happens i usually take it and run with it and i just happen to come across an article and let me just clarify another thing too I don't go out looking for stuff. I'm not like Googling relationship articles so I can read and stuff like that. I think that's kind of disingenuous and kind of, I don't know, just kind of like 
goes against the whole idea of what this is supposed to be. The reason that we started this podcast, me and Reggie, yeah, that Reggie, is because, well, the reason we started was because organically we were having conversations about these things and we wanted to put it out to you all to give us feedback and tell us if we were crazy or to chime in and do whatever. And so that organic nature is something that I've always prided myself on. And in these 95, 96 episodes, I never felt compelled to like search for a topic or something like that, or let me find something to talk about to feel time or something like that. And even though you might not think that all of the episodes were all that great, all that great, still, they were genuine, not just something for content's sake, not just something like, oh, let me put my spin on this thing. Everything that I've talked about in these 90 something episodes have been things that I honestly believe in, honestly, things that I think about, honestly, things that I care about, honestly, things that I want feedback on. And this is another one, especially considering how I feel about marriage and how I want to be married. So with all of that said, I, I saw this article on Yahoo Life and the article talked about the decline of marriage and it specifically asked people reasons why they felt the need not to be married. And so I'm not going to read all of these responses because honestly, some of these responses don't make any sense to me. But I can, if I remember, post the link to the article so you can read it for yourself. That is, if I remember, I've been running around a lot these days and maybe it's with maybe a subconscious holiday mode that's coming up or something like that. But and I'm going to do an episode about holidays. <laughs> and remember back in the day, me and Reggie, yeah, that Reggie, we did an episode on holidays and I'll get back into that because it's always funny to me. But yeah, the point is, if I remember to put to put the link to the article up, I will. Or if I don't remember to put it in the show notes, I'll put it up at Michael Mike. Well, not that epi, not that not that website. What is the oh datingwhileadulting.com? <laughs> I'll put it there. So give you all a reason to go to datingwhileadulting.com. So this article had different reasons, like I was saying, that people were saying that they didn't believe in marriage or didn't want to get married and things like that, despite being in long-term relationships. And I figured I'd share some of those with you and get your feedback on some of those things. So, okay. Oh. And also, I feel like saying some of these things I just never really thought about, <laughs> which is weird because I think about everything, or at least I thought I did. Now, the first one is obvious, even to me. I was in a secure relationship before, and it wasn't necessarily that I didn't want to marry the person. Well, I kind of didn't. But it's amazing how time flies when you're in a relationship. And that's the first thing that one of these couples said when talking about the reason that they didn't get married. There was a couple that they talked to, and they were saying that, you know, they started dating they got into a routine, time passed, and, you know, next thing you know, they're years into this committed relationship, and then they evaluate, hey, what's the next step? And it's like, do we need a next step? We've been in it this long. So it's, it's just that you've been dating, and things have been working, and when things are working, you know, hey, let's just enjoy the fact that it's working. And I really respect that one. And the main reason I respect that one is because, you know, people always talk to me about how things change when you get married. Yet people want to upset a good thing by getting married. Now, if you both have the understanding that you're just going to put rings on, get paperwork, and nothing's going to change, then that's fine. But I don't know if it's conscious or not, but there are just certain things that you, that happen after you get married that don't happen while dating. I had a good friend one time, and he was of the strong belief that once you get married, it takes things to another level, which I do believe, but he couldn't um, articulate 
what that other level was. And when I asked him and pressed him on it, he said he didn't know. Now, with that said, while I said that I believe in that too, hmm, I think of it as if you're dating someone, you're living separately, you are, and then you get married, you move in together, you combine your stuff and all of that stuff. To me, that's the next level. But in a lot of, in a lot of these relationships and in this example that I'm talking about now, they're, they were already living together. It's like they already have their lives in order and everything is everything. They're living like a married couple. So in their case, what is the difference in putting rings on and having a document? It's a fair question to ask, especially when things are working and you're happy at that point. Me, myself, I would still want to do it with the understanding that nothing would change because I don't really know about subconscious changes and all of that stuff. It's not like if things are going well, I'm going to be like, OK, now let me just try to work to make you miserable. I don't I don't know. I don't know. But I get the sentiment. Another one said that it's almost like a superstition, or maybe it was the same couple that said it was like, you know, things are going so well, it's almost like for superstitious reasons, it's like you don't want to mess it up by getting married. It's like things are going so well, if I dare change anything about this relationship or this routine, something bad might happen. And always joking, Reggie, that Reggie used to always joke as well that, hmm, sorry about that used to always joke that, you know, people date for 20 years, they get married and then they get divorced in six months. So what changes? That's the question that I've always asked and it's the one that I present now. But for that person saying that they're superstitious or that person that's saying that it's working, so why upset the apple cart? I mean, what can I say, you know? And it makes sense to me, but shoot. The more important thing is that it makes sense to them. So that's all that really matters. Now, the next one that I want to present, this was really interesting to me. One woman in the article, she said that her boyfriend was terrible with money and he has a ton of debt. The reason that was really interesting to me is because most people know that finances are the reasons that marriages fail. Her thing was she didn't want to get saddled with his debt. So he has all of his debt. He's bad with money, even though they're together. And she talked about all of the great qualities that he has as a boyfriend. The, while the money issue wasn't enough for her to break off the relationship, it was enough for her not to want to marry him. It's, it's kind of like, there was a movie called Leaving Las Vegas, follow me on this. And in that movie, Nicolas Cage was in it and he drank. And when he met, I can't, I think it might've been Elizabeth Perk, not, I don't know who the co-host was, but when he met his co-host and they had a toxic relationship, the thing that he told her when they first met was, you can never, it's like, you can never talk to me about drinking. I will never stop drinking. And she agreed to that. And they lived their toxic life and she never asked him. And they had this crazy, weird love story and whatever. And I guess that's, I apply that to this. It's like, he's bad with money. And instead of working with him to change that behavior or, or whatever, she's just like, you do your thing, but just understand that's your thing. We're not getting married because of that. And whatever you incur because of your bad habit, that's on you. And so I guess it's saying that, A, I can always have one foot out the door anytime that I want to. Now, for someone who is big into commitment like me, the idea of having a relationship that's that kind of kind of unstable, that's not something that would work for me. I'd always be looking for something that's more consistent, more stable, someone who is financially more stable, more consistent. But she says he has a lot of good qualities. So 
if they're both cool with it, again, that's me. But I can see that type of thinking or those types of philosophies being those that people in the world have. So even though I never thought about it, it does kind of make sense when you think about the, the era and world that we live in in this day and age. So I'm definitely not mad at that, especially, like I said earlier, considering how many marriages break up because of money. Hmm. So, you know. <sighs> so that's that for that. I'm sorry I got off on a little bit. <laughs> I just started thinking out loud or thinking to myself, which doesn't really work when you're doing a podcast. But I will say this about that whole thing, though, when you talk about marriage and stuff like that. And when I talk about her maybe having one foot out the door or standing next to the door, how far do you go with that? I mean, what if you have kids and you know, you're not married and you're saying you're not married, getting married for financial reasons. But if you do want to have kids with that person and they're not financially responsible, that is the time when they will need to be financially responsible. And even though you won't be married, you'll be together and you'll have a tie that might, that's probably stronger than marriage, which is a child that you both will be responsible for taking care of physically and financially. So what do you do in that case? But with that said, maybe, and it didn't say in the article, but maybe they weren't even trying to have kids. So if that's the case, then, hey, it can work out. But thinking about that relationship as opposed to the first example, it just doesn't seem like that relationship is long-term sustainable. But, hey. Now, the next thing definitely makes sense to me. There was a woman in the article that said that she just wasn't feeling the whole marriage at all, just because it reminded her of old patriarchal, the old days, you know, when women were treated like second-class citizens. When she thinks of marriage, she thinks that's, she, she thinks about those old school ways, barefoot and pregnant, all of that stuff. And it's hard to argue with that sentiment, you know? Well, I guess, I know, I can't talk about evolution and people evolving and then say, you can't argue with that sentiment. If you evolve, you can make marriage be what you want it to be. And that's one of the things that I'm always talking about. So to tie it to what happened in the old days, it's like, you can make it something different than the old days. You can define it the way that you want to define it. But for her, she just can't get past the way things used to be back in the day when women had no rights. And she ties the marriage label to those times. And hey, if a man's cool with it and they're in a relationship, cool. It's funny how I say you know, when men had all the control and then I say if her man's cool with it, but I don't mean it in that way. I just mean as a couple, if they both agree with it. <laughs> yeah. And so, and also as a black man, it's hard for me to argue with somebody, you know, when they point to historical reasons, considering, you know, how my people have been treated and people, how people try to like just ignore it and gloss over it. But that's another time, another topic for another time. Another couple that they pointed to in the article, they pointed to the reason of the lack of financial benefit. They say that, you know, the tax benefits that you might get from marriage, insurance benefits and things like that, those things can be addressed nowadays in ways that you don't necessarily have to get married. Now, I've never been married before, obviously. And I've never really been sure what the tax benefits to marriage were. I know that when I'm filing my taxes, I know that there's a spot where you can form jointly if you're a married couple. And I don't really know what that actually means. Obviously, I know what it means in the literal sense. I just don't know what the financial advantages are, if there are financial advantages. And I guess that's what they're speaking to. Those of you that are married, you all would know a whole lot better than me, obviously. And obviously, it's nothing that I've ever really thought about because, shoot, again, I'm not married. Now, even with the health insurance thing, you know, being on somebody's health care or something like that, you know, if you both have jobs, I mean, you can 
go through your job, she can go through her job and maybe it'll come out cheaper. It probably will come out cheaper depending on where you work. But that does bring up the question though, like what if one of you loses your job and you're not married? What happens then with regard to insurance? But with that said, and I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think that nowadays you don't necessarily have to be married to be on someone else's insurance. I think you can claim common law relationships on on your insurance forms and things like that. I believe that's the case. Again, I'm not 100% sure. And I didn't even think to look that up before I started recording, but somebody can let me know. I would appreciate that. And I will follow up with you all that don't know you all that are in the single boat with me. So if that's the case, then yeah, then, you know, and you're, if that's the case and you're looking at it from a financial perspective, then yeah, forget all of the spiritual and all the other stuff. If you're just looking at it from a financial and that's your calling card, like when I talked about um, several episodes ago, Don Cheadle, who said he married his now wife after 20 something years, just because of the money that he would save in being married. But if you don't see it the same way, then what's the point? I mean, unless you, I don't know, unless you're sneaking somebody across the border, you know, you on 90 day fiance or whatever, I guess there really isn't any point. But I don't know. I don't know. Another woman said that she had this aversion to marriage because she knows a lot of people that were in abusive relationships. And when it was time for them to get out of those relationships, which should have been as soon as possible, when they tried to get out of those abusive relationships, it would they remain tied to their spouse too long because of the difficulties in actually getting a divorce. And it's kind of bad to think about getting divorced when. I mean, being abused when you get married and thinking for it, like, okay, I don't want to get married because what if he's abusive and it'll be harder for me to get away from him? That's an odd way of thinking. I guess if you've been in that environment or had those experience, experiences, I guess it's something that you can look at and say, yeah, that is something to factor because, you know, when you look at movies like Sleeping with the Enemy or that Jennifer Lopez movie enough when it was like he, they wanted to get divorced, but it was hard and they had to run and all of that stuff. Yeah, I guess it's something to factor. But again, if you go into a marriage thinking that your spouse is going to be abusive, you probably shouldn't get into that, get into that marriage in the first place. But what do I know? What, what I don't know. What do I know? And and there were other examples about money. And another one was that while I talked about the one earlier where she didn't want to get married to do because he had a lot of debt going in and she was like, I don't want to be a part of that. Other people point to being in marriages where the spouse might pass, the spouse might die. And this is another thing that I wasn't aware of. Apparently, if your spouse dies, his debt or her debt doesn't die with you. And even if you have separate accounts and stuff like that, um, separate bills and things like that, if you're married, from what I understand, the companies can come after you as a spouse for collection of that debt, as opposed to if you keep things 100% separate and you're unmarried, when you die, your debt dies with you and they just have to write that off. That's a big one. That's a big one. At least it is for me because I'm always thinking about money. That might be the best one I've heard yet. But so I'll just wrap up by saying that those were some of the reasons that were given by people that say that they don't want to be married. I don't want to judge the justifications of them. But with that said, this is the world that we live in right now. We live in a world of online dating, instant relationships, microwavable relationships, people not wanting to get married. And one thing that they, did, that they didn't say in the article that 
I hear often from people at this age, again, the demographic of the people that are listening to this podcast, I know a lot of people that have been married before and they're just like, I don't want to go through that process again. For whatever reason, just the mental, the mental whatever that it took from that person, they just don't want to do that again. It's like they view, they equate marriage to work that they don't want to do. So that does make me wonder what future relationships look like for them, but I, I can't knock their hustle. But like I was saying in closing, we live in this world of online dating, instant relationships, microwavable relationships, people not wanting to get married, rejecting the traditional unions and things like that, people trying to define things on their own. What's funny is that you would think that with all of the all of these new lines of thinking and this evolution, you would think that we would be more happy as a society, that things would be moving in a more happy, positive direction. But it seems like it's doing the opposite. It seems like it's moving us all in more of a negative, divisive direction. And it's strange with all of the positives. When I talk about how society has evolved in good ways, it seems like we're getting along less and less. And there are other things that that's attributable to, you know, people don't interact anymore. People don't see each other face to face anymore with Zoom calls and Zoom meetings and remote working and things like that. You've taken away, like meeting, meeting people at work that you would date was one of the top, if not the top ways that you would meet someone. And now that's not the case. Now it's online dating and online dating presents its own challenges, which, you know, I've spoken about a hundred million times and everybody has on the dating podcast. It's like online dating is the easiest place to throw darts, but, you know, it goes deeper than that. It's bigger than that. And when you look at the declining views on marriage, I don't know, it's like a chicken and egg thing. Like, is that because of society or has society dictated this? Who knows? But it is something to think about. Like I've always said, or if I didn't always say it, I'm saying it right now. These are just questions that I have, things that I'm trying to figure out on my dating journey, my journey to marriage, which I still want to have. Yeah, But for now, I'll give you back the rest of your day and eat or evening. I thank you all for stopping by. Reggie. What's up? Yeah. Reggie's not saying anything. Thank you all for, the, for staying with me on a journey. Thank you all for continu continuing the journey with me. And until next time, which will be the best time. I don't know, kind of rhymes. Anyway, I'm out of here. Bye. <laughs>